Mike Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBoat.com, and I'm here with the band Bile McAnimal. How are you doing today? We're good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's good to have you. Now, I want to start off by saying you guys have an interesting band name, so you want to tell us a little about that? <laughs> yeah, all right. So, um, this one enough for everyone to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Like, at least you got the band name right first time. Um, Normally, you have to like say it a couple of times. You get through the whole biomechanical, biomechanical, and we eventually land on biomechanical. So I'm impressed you got it right first time. Um, so I, before I started writing music, I back when every, everyone like was allowed to use false names on the internet, um, I went under the name like biomechanical on what would have been I think like MSN and SoundCloud and all that back in the day, and this would have been like a decade ago now. So when I first started uploading music, I uploaded it on my SoundCloud account, which was using my internet pseudonym, a pseudonym by McAnimal. Um, and so the name just kind of stuck. Uh, it was good enough of a name that there was no reason to ever change it. So we just kind of kept it, uh, and it grew from there. I don't think I ever intended it to be it grow to uh, the size that it is now, but you know, it, it's it's a it's a solid name. It works. Um, people. I think part of the thing where you have to say it again and again just to get get people to remember it, but it does stick in heads after that. Yeah, it's a cool name. Now I want to ask, what genre of music would you classify yourselves as? Because there's a whole bunch of different elements in there. Uh, it's one. Of, it's a tough that's question. A good question. <laughs> <laughs> Every band wants to think they're like the most special, like we are our own genre kind of nonsense, but um. Yeah, it is quite the uh, the special blend that we've put together, I think. There's a, there's a lot of herbs and spices in this. Um, I think we, we threw around the term like genre nomads once because we kind of hop from inspiration to inspiration. Obviously, we come from this kind of like industrial underground EBM world. You know, we play these dark, horrible goth clubs and play <laughs> with a lot of what we would classify as like industrial bands. Um, but I think that's not our, it may be our home, but it's not like all there is to us. Um, you know, I uh, we were like hugely influenced by like black metal and melodic death metal. And then all this modern EDM sound design, this kind of dubstep, hardcore, uh, like uh, techno and more recently things like mid tempo um, have we've really found found homes there as well. So it's whatever inspiration uh, is taking us at the time, really. So it, you know, to put, give a genre on it wouldn't really be fair because you know every different song has inspirations from all these different places. Yeah, but just because you always need to put some sort of a you know, name to things. I think I've just been calling it like dark bass. Dark bass. Yeah, I, I like dark bass or oh, dark EDM. I've used yeah. as well. It's kind like of my go-to name. It's a general enough, but gives enough of a you know good descriptor that I think it works. Yeah. Now you guys, I see you just dropped some new music yesterday. So you want to tell us about that? Yeah, yeah, a massacre or a Huxel. Um So. Uh, I wrote Huxal, I believe it was in December or January, uh, and that came out yesterday. That features remixes from uh, one of a good friend of ours, ESA. ESA, actually, Jamie, um, one of the first remixes I ever had released was, and this would have been in like 2012, I think, 2013, was a remix I did for him. So it's pretty cool that we've come full circle with that. Uh, and then uh, another guy called Social Kid, who's part of this whole a mid-tempo thing with like blank and swarm and reds and stuff like that. Uh, so it was really cool that we kind of get a, a people from both fields, the kind of like both inspiration that we have, the industrial guys and like the more EDM style guys. Uh, the whole thing is like, it's a bit of a love letter to new like heavy dance music. Um, and also like I have this big love, oh, you can see a bit of my studio here, like modular synthesis is like my big thing at the moment. Um, and a lot, a lot of it's done in there, and it's a bit of a love letter to that, really. It, it explores a lot of interesting sound. It's uh, and very, very different to everything we've done before. It's a really fun track. Awesome. 
Now, how are you guys handling this uh, quarantine time? Um, well, I mean, we've been doing a lot more streaming recently. Uh, Matt started up a biomechanical Twitch channel that took off straight away. It's been awesome to see how much engagement that's been getting straight away. Um, but I mean, for me, it's been business as usual, just the same, like, you know, working from home and um, you know, grinding on music. And it's not been that much different for me personally, but, and I think it, for you, Matt, it's probably been similar schedule in terms of things, but just a lot more online activity now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, like, um, it started off that it was all business as usual, but as we kind of all realized, ah, we're kind of in this for a bit of a long run. It was working out what we could do in order to adapt. Uh, I think it was actually Kako that did something first, because you did your, um, your, your drumming live stream with, uh, which which radio channel was it for? Yeah, it was like a radio in Italy. It was called like uh, Good Morning Genova, which is yeah. like um, uh, my hometown, and they did like this kind of program. And I started doing like the, the interview with like a, a live stream performance. And uh, yeah, after that, like I started like having a kind of a chain reaction, <laughs> and started like uh, yeah, seeing you guys like uh, doing like lots of live stream shows too. Spinning like uh, you know, tunes and doing like uh, various activities. So yeah, in the meantime, like uh, in the meantime, you doing like a DJ set. I just like thinking to write writing down like more material, more music, because of course, like I cannot I cannot be a DJ because I'm a drummer. I just call my drum kit. <laughs> but things that I can do just like I start writing down music or simple simple beats where we we can start like working on it once we go like uh time enough to, to do it so yeah helping each other and balancing this period for my opinion is the best way to deal with the the, the lockdown and the the, the the quarantine so yeah this is the, the the mindset where we are at the moment i guess yeah like because w- once we'd realized it was actually something serious like okay we've got to get on this live stream thing and like establish something because you know music live stream it's a thing but it wasn't really an accepted form of entertainment when there were better alternatives uh, i.e going to see something live like we are all at heart live musicians that's where i think our passion lies but okay what can we do as musicians and artists and performers in order to adapt to this um so we i started like this biomechanical live stream the first one was just me sat in here with one camera playing some tunes and chatting to people on twitch and we got like 80 people or something um and then the next time around we're okay so people liked it but how can we make this better how do we want to give people an actual performance so we set up like an actual dj station uh we got some like live visuals going uh, and then we got a couple of a couple more performers so like you had a like support acts and a headliner because uh, Keith uh, ran his own act uh, as like the sub headliner as Mechanical Vein, and then we had Angel Spit. I don't know if you know Angel Spit. Um, yeah. yeah, and they they were our headliner, um, and like I think it was one and a half thousand people individuals watched it, which was fucking amazing. So obviously now that people they, they they obviously want something, so we have to build something that they want to see, uh, and this kind of more gig like approach to it isn't something you used to have on live streams because you know not that many people were watching it but now they are um so yeah it's been a really cool experience and like you know now i've been doing guests on other streams i was a guest on the carcassaurus live stream last night um we had like strathdans and the gothicals and that, that was really good fun uh, and we're doing um i think slimelight is running a 24-hour live stream as we speak and like slimelights are like home club so you know it's gradually picking up um another part of this as well is like okay how do we write as musicians when we all can't get together and put our heads together and practice and throw ideas at each other and we've started to do that as well we've got a new track which i think will be coming out in two months um and i was like okay Kako, here are the bits that i need you to do and then he like fired back the drum tracks we came back and forth and back and forth and eventually we had something we could use. Like, it's not as organic as I would like to write, but you know, you adapt, we work with it. Yeah, of course, of course. 
it did work reasonably well for a remix that Matt and I did recently as well. Um, Swarm and Tiny Cat. Uh, we did a remix for Devils at the at your door, and just you know kicking some stems back and forth between us, and it turned out really nice. It's, we put that out recently for free download just a few weeks ago. Um, so we've been making uh, some killer music in this time. I know for me personally, one of the tricky parts is um, recording vocals at home is awful. And, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and London uh, flats are packed pretty close together as well. <laughs> Not the level of privacy you might get in the suburbs. And uh, for a pretty like amped up X, like biomechanical or my solo thing, mechanical vein, it's yeah, it's hard to deliver the the intensity of vocal performance that you want when you're at home. Although I've been getting some uh, killer clap samples on a Thursday at eight o'clock every every week now. <laughs> <laughs> now your live shows are full of a lot of intense energy and uh, you want to tell us about that? Oh man, like I, I grew up watching all these bands and I'd go and see local acts and bigger bands and go to festivals, you know, when you're like properly getting into your music. Uh, you know, at the age of like 13, 14, uh, even at that age, like I was seeing these bands giving these amazing shows, like, huh, I want to do this. So, a, like, I performed in quite a few bands before I this one, like, kind of stuck. Um, and I always had this ethos like, you come and see a band to actually see a band. You want to be surprised, you want to be moved, you want to have something beyond what it is, uh, that you would have on a have on a record right because otherwise you would just watch your youtube video or whatever so that kind of like brutality that vis viscerality visceralness yeah or whatever um that that's i, I want to portray that i want people to feel something when they come and see us um every show has to be unique special people have to come and wear like what the fuck was that um, <laughs> and like these these guys like you know like Keith and Kako and Lex um, are a huge part of that as well. Like, I'm sure you've seen the uh, the videos or pictures of um, uh, Keith's Electro Axe, which everyone talks about. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, it's so easy for electronic music to become just knob twiddling at a table <laughs> or like singing over uh, a laptop. In and indus it's industrial karaoke is what we call exactly. that. <laughs> Not even just, yeah, industrial is very guilty, but um, you know, like any l electronic show can easily be that. And those shows can be awesome. I've gone to amazing shows and still enjoy it, but I've always been most inspired by bands that really like bring it live and show you what they're you're, they're doing and present electronic music in a more rock format. Like, you know, obviously the Prodigies like major one uh the glitch mob has their sampler synth set up so you can really see what they're playing on they call it the blade um and imperative reaction was one of the bands that really like sealed my love for industrial when i was first getting into it because they have like that sort of rock presentation of very electronic music so yeah building this electro x uh sampler guitar instrument is just a way of just bringing electronic music in that way to people on no. not just relying on nap twiddling. <laughs> <laughs> I had a similar experience with um, a band called Ivarden Sphere, uh, uh, you know, like a guy from Canada. Um, but when he played a Resistance Festival in what I think was 2016, um, he brought, I think it was seven drummers with him and two live vocalists. So you essentially had nine guys playing uh, an entirely like tribal set and it was unlike anything i'd ever seen before it was absolutely incredible i've seen them they're really good live right right uh, yeah i saw them when i lived in new york city and that was a a luau themed show put on by vampire <laughs> freaks a long time ago so yeah the yeah, ivarden sphere luau show is pretty great <laughs> i actually think i was at that show what year was what was that it was oh it was so long ago it's like like several years ago so <laughs> uh, yeah, I might have been at that same show. It's all fucking yeah. world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bunch of guys with like flower necklaces. It was pretty great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know who you'll run into. I've gone to shows a lot of times, and bands are just hanging out in the crowd, and you never know. Now, uh, for you guys, if people want to find you online, look you up, get your music, how do they do that? Uh, my main thing we're pushing at the moment is like uh, Spotify. It seems to be where music is kind of living at the moment. I, I got to profess, like, I'm a, a bit traditional. I like CDs, I like records, but, you know, the online world is where we're at at the moment. So you easily can find us on Spotify. Uh, Bandcamp is where I try and push people to the most. That's the best way you can support any artists. Uh, in terms of if you want to connect with us, uh, I'm very active on Twitter. Facebook is where, like, the home of most information. Twitch.tv forward slash Biomechanimal is where you're going to see a lot of, like, uh, us doing performance pieces. So we do that once a month at the moment, and I host some other channels as well. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel, but it's it's not super active. There's, like, an old music video on there. Uh, SoundCloud, we're on there. You can find some like rare demo tracks on there. You might want to check that out before I delete them for space. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, oh yeah, I'm, I'm on Instagram as well. Uh, I'm normally just talking shit and putting loads of bad stories up on there. So <laughs> all over the social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, what do you guys have coming up in the future? Um, a lot of sitting at home in our pants by the look of it, I think. <laughs> uh, um, so we got uh, this live stream coming up on, I think it's June the 12th. That's for my birthday. We're going to get like some guests and friends. That should be good fun. Um, in terms of new music, I am, I am just about finished on the next single, which is the song that we've been working on for like, five years now it was written in the week after the last album came out which was in 2015 so it's like it's pretty old school bio if this band can have an old school but it's like it's it's a crowd favorite we just never recorded it properly and it, it is just about done that's had some engineering done by Jan from noise effects who's like seen as a gold standard in in this music uh it, it's a proper like party industrial song uh, some really cool remixes that I can't share right now, but they're like some good friends of ours uh, remixing it too. Um, guys, what are your projects? Because it's like it's not just me that's got projects in bio. Like Keko and Keith both have their own things. Uh, as does Lex. Like, what have you guys got coming up as well? Yeah, so my stuff is mechanical vein. So I'm obviously I've got a few tracks getting uh, ready for release right now, but um, it does take a long time to wrap this stuff up. But um, Yep, but I'd like to have some of that stuff released in the very near future, um, and some more stream performances as well. So, you know, Keko probably has some stuff in the pipe also. Uh, yeah, I mean, from my side, like, what can I say? Uh, I just pushed my my project as a woman band, releasing like a single every three, four months if I can, which is quite a hard job because I have to think about all of the instruments. And uh, being a drummer, not a singer, not a guitar player, so I had to think about all of my limits. Then, like, uh, of course, like, I started like, working with Biomechanimo, with absolutely pleasure. And, uh, yeah, try to um, work as a session drummer when I, when I can, just, like, uh, traveling around and doing gigs and then get back and then get going, like, uh, releasing material, try to make my, my life as a musician so active. And having a kind of, I can say, deadlines just to don't uh, lose myself in, in the middle of all the project, try, um, getting the risk to make like uh, mistakes, uh, losing energy is like uh, where I'm actually looking for keep the level, the same level for all my activities, uh, keeping like a proper, like I uh, can I say, creating like a kind of like a trademark. So when you when you hear my name, I want to I want to see like the people recognizing like all of the projects where I'm working with, and saying like oh this is stuff like with um, with a good quality. So that is my main goal at the moment. And uh, yeah, so this is the stuff that they're doing like uh, especially this period where I'm literally stuck at mine <laughs> during the, the coronavirus. So yeah. <laughs> Again, when this is all said and done, do you plan on getting out live again? 
Oh, yeah, well, the, the first day, the first day, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> be part of something, yeah. Um, so we were meant to be going on tour later in the year. Um, that's sort of fallen apart now because, uh, you know, everything that's been organised was basically undone because of all of this. But we have some shows booked in for later in the year. We are playing a couple of shows with the Birthday Massacre. That should be good fun. Um, we will see what else. I've been in talks with the guys that run Beat Cancer. That's like a electronic music for cancer research charity in the uk might be doing something with them at the end of the year we'll see um and then we would i would really like to t properly take us on tour next year uh that's sort of the goal but yeah um obviously the home of bio is the stage uh and that that's we will be back as soon as we can be and we've had this um this record label slash collective thing brewing called hybrid black yeah yeah it's hard to really push this the sort of fusion sound we've been talking about this sort of modern dark bass with you know industrial influences all these sort of like these genre blending x and the sound that um doesn't necessarily have its stock home with existing labels or scenes or whatever um and we've been planning on starting some club nights to kind of foster this uh, darker hybrid sound and we had planned to start that this summer it's obviously been pushed out a bit um but you can absolutely look out for those things to start happening once they can and if you check out hybridblack.com that's black with uh, b-l-a-k no c um you can check out some of the artists we're working with and our curated spotify playlists and yeah have an email list to stay in the loop about all that stuff and I know uh, Matt has his own biomechanical curated Spotify playlist as well. It's just constantly updated if anyone wants to, yeah, listen to the stuff that we've been inspired by. Awesome. I want to ask, do you guys have any memorable experiences with the band over the years that you can share with everybody? <laughs> the Donut Burger. I knew you were going to say the Donut Burger. <laughs> so um, we went on a, a short tour of the UK like pretty early on to Keith and Lex joining the band. Um, and <laughs> we were like three days into the tour and we thought it was like a great idea to go and get some food like this American diner. And we end up like pretty, it's, it's like obviously we're pretty hungover. We've been going for a few days now. We've pissed off the other bands on the tour because we've stayed up and they haven't. Um, and like well, okay we need to actually get something solid in our bellies so we we go to this diner and the first, biggest thing on the menu is this donut burger it's like two cross uh, crispy cream with like a slab of meat like you know this enormous thing like <laughs> british we're gonna take the piss out of anything even remotely american uh keith being quite remotely american it was like you have to eat this uh, I, and for some reason, you agreed to it. So the, I have this picture. Didn't take of much Keith. convincing. <laughs> I have this picture of Keith with this staring, with this look of disappointment at this burger in front of him. And I know whenever, and whenever I need to cheer myself up, I go and look at this photo because I know that I can never disappoint myself as much as Keith disappointed himself in that moment. <laughs> that picture is amazing, actually. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I'm pretty sure that donut burger is still somewhere inside me, and this never left. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. Well, it was good having you guys and talking with you, and everybody, look them up. Thanks for having us, man. <laughs>